Autism Speaks Canada remains committed to building inclusive communities where autistic Canadians can reach their full potential. We are excited to share Life on the Spectrum by Autism Speaks Canada with you today. In this documentary, we share lived experiences of autistic Canadians and their families from coast to coast to coast to increase understanding and acceptance of the people with autism. First, we start with the land acknowledgement and then visit our autistic friends and their families across Canada. Join us on this journey to explore life on the spectrum. Thank you. We want to acknowledge First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples whose footsteps have traversed this country and created the foundations for all those who come after. Hey Canada, welcome to Life on the Spectrum, where you're going to meet incredible Canadians doing amazing things. Oh! My name's Evan Boychuk. Um, I was diagnosed with autism around, I think I was 11. I've been working with the TV camera for seven years with my church, getting experience in everything from audio recording engineering to film. And I'm currently also enrolled at St. Polytechnic, our local trade school here in Calgary. I'm here on location to help film my little brother, who's also on the spectrum, for Autism Speaks Canada. Let us introduce to you our favorite athlete. This is Andon, also known as Biggs. He's been with us for about six years here at the MSG, and over the years we've been able to see him develop into the goalie and person he is today. He started when he was eight years old. He had the passion for the position. He really grasps all the details of what we're talking about. And he's really, really a fun kid to coach. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Darren McKee. I'm the uh, CEO of the Saskatchewan School Boards Association. I'm Anishinaabe, originally from Treaty 2, uh, Ochitikosipi First Nation. And I'm uh, proud to be here on uh, beautiful Treaty 4 territory. Um, Sarah is, loves unconditionally, uh, so she's very friendly, she um, is very social. Sarah has been gifted with the ability to connect and connect people. Uh, and so when we go places, uh, we'll go to the mall, we'll go to the libraries. Uh, everybody seems to know Sarah and, you know, on a first names basis, it's hi Sarah, uh, how are you doing Sarah? Uh, and Sarah loves to introduce us. Uh, to everybody else and so she's a very much a connector uh, and that's been very good for us. Um, we don't always, uh, we're not very uh, extroverted and so uh, to have her uh, constantly teach us how important it is to make those connections um, to interact in a positive way with folks has been a gift. I like to go to Nikki's Cafe, right? Yeah, and where else do you like to go? I like to go to to the, to the library. Yeah, what do you do at the library? Tell funny jokes. <laughs> Should I tell about my dog? You can tell them about your dog if you like. I have a dog whose name is Shiloh and he likes to lick my dad's face, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's, I think that's one of the big lessons for us is that, you know, oftentimes, and I liken this to, to lots of conversations I have about Indigenous people, that sometimes we, we classify people into a certain category, that they're like this, they're like that. That's the beauty of autism, is that almost everyone is different. And uh, it takes time and effort and energy um, to get to know people on the scale. Bonjour Canada, je m'appelle Jacques. Nous sommes le famille Barrenoff et bienvenue au Montréal. I was telling your parents it's about 10 years that I've had the pleasure of knowing your family. And I see you're wearing the Autism Speaks Canada walk shirt. Tell me a little bit about your involvement with the walks. It started when I was very young. My parents took me on a walk when I was maybe five, six years old. And we started doing every year. And at the time, I always knew my brother had autism. I didn't know that I had autism mm -hmm. until I was about uh, 10 years old. That I suspected because they always told me I could not talk till I was three. And of course, it doesn't mean you have autism, but I was curious and I asked and it turns out I did. How is it different for you and Quinn? Sure, uh, for me, I, it's not really something I think about often. I have my, my concerns, my academics, my physical fitness, my social life, 
and I usually don't incorporate my autism into it just because in the end of the day, I'm not Jack Baranoff the autistic kid, I'm Jack Baranoff. Autism doesn't define who I am, autism doesn't define who any autistic kid is. In the end of the day, you're still your own individual. One thing uh, about Quinn, he has trouble communicating and we try to understand him as much as possible. And sometimes we actually wonder, uh, what is Quinn really thinking? Uh, Quinn does have his own unique interests. So, for example, computers. He's, he taught himself how to use a computer and sometimes he knows more than my mother does and <laughs> she works in software. Right, right. If there's one thing that you would like others to know about autism, what would just one thing be? That you have to understand the individual with autism, not autism in itself. Employment Works is a partnership program between Autism Speaks Canada and the Sanif Family Foundation, funded by the Government of Canada. Canada, let's go meet our new friend, Gurlal. Gurlal, how do I say I got the job in Punjabi? <laughs> yeah, you got the job! Yeah. Awesome! Well, congratulations, <laughs> but before we get into you getting the job, yeah. I want you to tell Canada about yourself. I'm a student with BCIT right now. Oh, good. Right now I'm actually um, working towards uh, receiving an associate certificate in accounting, uh, computerized accounting. And the most inspiring thing is, yeah. is that you're helping Canadians coast to coast to coast understand what autism is, mm -hmm. and more importantly, understanding that everybody has a place in the workplace. Right. Uh, so I'd say like struggles with uh, not only like landing employment, like, uh, you know, obtaining employment, but also like uh, maintaining it right. at certain positions. I think that's because uh, mostly because like the management and other uh, like higher officials don't really understand the nature of uh, autism or ASD. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I feel like that's the reason why uh, I have been let go in the past. There's uh, some individuals that they can't like fend for themselves. They're just, they're unable to communicate at all. Uh, they need like full on advocacy. Uh, they can't self advocate whatsoever. Right. Not even when they become adults. I mean, I didn't know what to expect, but like right. there's so many, like actually I, I discovered so many different job opportunities, employment opportunities through the Employment Works program. Like I was surprised how many, there was just countless opportunities. And so where did you get a job? With London Drugs, London uh, the Drugs. Granville location. <laughs> nice! Yeah. Hi Canada, I'm Brooklyn and I'm 10. This is my dad Richard and this is my mom Aisha. That's Olivia and Dorian, Olivia's 5 and Dorian is four. Come on guys, let's go. If you meet my kids and they're having a good day, then everybody loves my kids. But if you meet my kids and they're having a bad day, and then everybody has these preconceived ideas about what autism is and what they are capable of, of and what they're not capable of, and they, they can accomplish anything that any kid that doesn't have autism, does have autism, it doesn't matter. That they, they can accomplish anything just the same as everybody else. They just might need to be approached in a different way. Brooklyn needs help and guidance with figuring out how to problem solve situations. Um, Con and conflict she's, resolution. Yeah, she she needs quite a bit of guidance. and the, Her, her go-to coping mechanisms aren't easy for a lot of other people to understand why she's doing those things because they don't seem like logical at that moment to somebody who hasn't experienced it firsthand. So. Olivia is very sensitive to like loud noises, um, to like too bright of lights, crowded places. Um, Dorian is pretty similar to that, um, though Dorian is more doesn't understand safety. So safety is kind of a big concern in regards to you know like running into the road. Um, and at school, you know, our biggest concern is him kind of leaving the premises, um, which is kind of something he does whenever he's upset or um, he just doesn't get his way. 
Uh, we got involved with Autism Speaks Canada, um, I guess through the um, Autism Hub in Richmond, uh, BC here. Um, they, you know, had resources out and, um, and we were looking more into it and we started doing the walks. When you go to the events like the walks and, and so on and so forth and there's, there's so many people that come from all over to take part that it's, uh, yeah, you can, you, it brings a common bond together. Today we're in the Northwestern Territories in the beautiful city of Yellowknife. We'll be meeting the Sanderson family. Come follow me. Is that a deer or is that a moose? Caribou. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even know. Good for you. High five. Oh, no, you know, one. No, oh, you beat me. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Do you want to introduce your beautiful family? This is Kane. He's um, 10 years old and then Marshall is seven years old. Renee went through a checklist of first signs of autism that she found on the net and it kind of made us to think, oh, you know, this might, he might actually be autistic. And so we better go get him checked. And that's when we went to our pediatrician to, to start the process. And then we had got sent to Glen Rose in Edmonton for the assessment mm -hmm. and um, yeah it was around two when he was uh, officially diagnosed with autism mm -hmm. and uh, we had to make the trip down it was a two-day trip that we had to drive down. How has the journey been in terms of sports and services in Northwestern Territories and particularly Yellowknife? It's been a struggle. Um, there isn't a whole lot offered here. Um, the government of Northwest Territories does have OT and speech available, but those are on limited basis. Uh, when we, for Kane, we got probably an hour each a week for those things. And when we originally got the assessment from Glen Rose, they requested like intensive uh, therapy of speech and OT, but just there was no one here to do it. Uh, there was no private um, businesses that were doing it at the time, so we had really no access to it. And I think that's when I really dove into learning more about autism. And I think Kane is definitely helping the community see um, what autism is and what he's capable of doing mm -hmm. um, and again I try to remind them like this this is just one person of autism that you know it doesn't mean that every single kid is going to be this way like mm -hmm. even my son's not even that way mm -hmm. my oldest um, but he's definitely helping to spread that awareness um, in school uh, all the kids know who he is um, they welcome him um, even out in the community I Right from the beginning, my job was to advocate better services for him. I actually had a friend reach out to me and um, uh, told me about Autism Speaks Canada and how they were looking for families and asked if I wanted to be a part of it. And so I was like, yeah, for sure, like this is what I do. <laughs> so I got involved and it's been good ever since. Um, I did get connected with the response team uh, with Autism Speaks Canada and they hooked me up with some resources and some other programs that I can access. So that was really great. And then now uh, we're doing this documentary and it's just, it's been really great. Like um, to be able to share our story across Canada and spread the awareness and acceptance of autism. Like that's, that's what I'm here for. Holy man, awesome. Oh, nice. I like how you keep everything organized. I got this big bad with the Huracan. Ah, <laughs> you need your own car TV show. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna start. Ready? Yeah. Go. He can sight memorize the way that words uh, look. Amazing. And what's fascinating is he doesn't really read. He just got But he knows how to get in. Yeah. Wow. So he I know, knows. I know how to control everything in this yeah. city. Were the signs that your husband saw that got him thinking that there is something different about your son? He might have been able to verbally communicate, even so at a young age. But Kaneem could verbally communicate? Yes, but he was delayed. He was delayed. Mm -hmm. But it, we, it was clear that he wasn't understanding his cognitive under, mm -hmm. level of understanding. Mm -hmm. There was something off. Mm -hmm. Also, just like certain things about him, his reaction to music and sounds, very musical. Um, whenever he'd go to sleep, he, every, it's till this day, he rocks himself. 
like this, and he sings to himself to sleep. Yeah, that's his like um, Comf helping make yeah. him comfort. Yeah, as I as I mentioned to you before, like I, we were always just open to any studies, and I remember we were once I guess we were in the hospital for sick children for some sort of appointment. And we saw a poster in the elevator wow. that was talking about this upcoming study for um, siblings and parents of kids with autism. Each child had to go through this whole testing process. Mm -hmm. It was great in the sense that um, we also got um, more of an idea of their academic levels. All of them. All of them. Their, where, the, where, they were, um, where they were behind, where they were ahead, where they were average, everything. Like my youngest son, Naftali, at the time, he w must have been like three years old. And so he wasn't yet in a school environment. So, but through the tests, we also learned just about him and like, you know, his spatial awareness and what, what areas he's really good at and what he's not good at. So it was really interesting. I think it was a, a mental turning point. It like gave me clarity. Parents need to be realistic and, and also be an advocate for their kids. But I do think that um, joining these research projects are literally, this is what's going to help our kids. Yeah. Had we not had joined the research project, not only didn't we, <laughs> did, did we help ourselves, but we helped the community of, of humanity. So I, I, I just think that like, even if it's from a, selfless, a selfish perspective, Join it because you're going to get answers that you would never ever think that you'd get. Living here in Summerside has been a blessing to both of us. It's very soothing. The views are glorious. The sunsets are amazing. It's just a great place to be. Hi Canada. My name is Joanne. This is my son Ivan. Hello. Welcome to our home. So being on the spectrum myself, this is what I call my grounding wall. Whenever I feel stressed, I have anxiety attacks or something like that, I know that I can always come in here. I know every artist that has made every piece of artwork on this wall. So to keep up with the organizing of things that I do, one of the things that I play with a lot is Lego because it's just very calming for somebody like me. But I also enjoy collecting my antiques. We have 52 drawers so that I can organize and keep track of all of my Lego kits. Raising my son Ivan, I like to think of him as a very big success story in how you can take somebody from nonverbal into a very, very capable adult. I wasn't very good when it came to um, things being unclear. Uh, a simple clean up your room was not sufficient. You needed to lay out a plan of action of how to clean it up, where you wanted things to be, um, even the simple state of how well dusted you wanted something was something I needed clarified. If it wasn't sufficiently detailed, uh, it was liable to cause a meltdown because I wouldn't know what to do. So what would you tell a parent that has been given a diagnosis for their child that they are on the spectrum and they have autism? It's a superpower. Find what they're really good at, find what they can excel at, and Feed that, what would you call that? Feed that enthusiasm. Make sure that the child knows that they're not doing anything wrong. They're just themselves. Give them chances to fail. And it teaches them the opportunity to be able to cope with that. Give them the chance to excel at something and make sure that you praise them. Everybody deserves an equal chance. Jaden, you're going to get a special opportunity. You get to go give everybody another high five. One per person, okay? Yeah? Is that okay? Okay, go ahead. Okay, let's do this one more time. Good job. Awesome. Nice work. Good work. Can we give them two? Can I have one? Can you have one? Jaden is the sweetest human on the whole planet. Um, he has so much love, yeah, he's full of love, and he's super kind. He just doesn't have the same, you know, judgment that other people have, you know. What are some things we do together? We like skating in the winter. We like swimming. Do you love swimming? Do you like going under the water? Do we do puzzles sometimes? He does a lot of puzzles. He's very, very fast. He just sees them in a way different way than I see them. For people who have brothers and sisters with autism, always try to be their biggest advocate. 
Um, I think there's going to be lots of times where, especially if you have a brother or sister like Jaden, where they can't speak for themselves. And you have to remember that you now have to take on that role sometimes. With Jaden, um, one thing I'm learning is um, to find a balance between working on being the best sibling that I can be and also giving myself grace. I think you're always going to make mistakes. You know, sometimes he gets on my nerves, he's my brother. Um, every sibling gets on your nerves. Sometimes I'll raise my voice at him or I will have a bad day and probably not give him as much attention as I need to. And I always want to be aware of that and work on um, just improving from that point. And it's different than having a normal sibling relationship because you don't have that person telling you where you can improve and telling you, um, hey, we need to work on this in our relationship. This needs to be done better. It kind of falls on me. So I have to be hyper aware of that all the time. And sometimes it's tricky, but at the end of the day, you know, it's worth it. I want Jaden to have the best life that he can have. Um, and that's something that I always want to keep on my mind and keep working on, I guess. Help us create an inclusive Canada where artistic people can reach their full potential. Thank you for watching Life on the Spectrum by Autism Speaks Canada. We were made committed to sharing authentic stories of autistic Canadians coast to coast to coast. Join us in our pursuit of inclusion and acceptance of autistic Canadians. Support the cause. www.autismspeaks.ca Autism Speaks Canada.